You're listening to the most captivating podcast in iTunes. That's right, the Elite Man Podcast, where we turn average men into elite men every day. We interview the very best experts from the lifestyle, health, fitness, social, and even entrepreneurial worlds. And with their help, we give you some of the best advice on the planet. Subscribe now if you haven't already and enjoy the show. And oh yeah, if you really enjoy it, leave us a review. On today's episode, episode number 233, entitled... How to finally unlock your financial potential, make ridiculous amounts of money, and live the life you want. I chat with Dan Locke. Dan Locke is a Chinese-Canadian business magnate, global educator, best-selling author of the book F.U. Money, and the king of high-ticket sales. In today's episode, Dan talks about how he was able to become a self-made multi-millionaire after having over a dozen failed online businesses early in his career. He shares the key lessons he learned over the years about self-branding, charging a premium price, growing a massive following, and creating a vastly wealthy the empire. Dan covers everything from social media to high ticket sales to finding great mentors to building and scaling your net worth. If you're wondering how to finally make as much money as you've always wanted and live the life you've always wanted to live, check this episode out now. You are going to absolutely love it. Hey, have you checked out our Elite Man YouTube channel yet? If not, get on it right now. Go to EliteManMagazine.com slash YouTube and start watching our fantastic videos. We cover everything from dating, health, business, fitness, confidence, mindset, social skills, everything that you need to know to be a 21st century Elite Man, we've got you covered. We have a new video coming out every Monday and Friday, and I'm telling you, this is the number one place to get your Elite Man fix and the number one place to grow as a man. These videos will absolutely change your life and entertain you at the same time. I'm telling you, check these videos out right now. I have so much fun putting them together. I know you're going to absolutely love them. EliteManMagazine.com slash YouTube. Make sure you check it out right now and subscribe to our channel to get more of these fantastic videos and get notified the instant we release a new video. EliteManMagazine.com slash YouTube. All right, guys, we're live. It's Justin Stenstrom from EliteManMagazine.com. And my guest today is the one and only high ticket closer, high ticket sales guy, Dan Locke. Dan, thanks so much for coming on the show, man. Hey, thank you, Justin. Thank you for thank you for inviting me. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. We got this on video too, which I usually don't do for the podcast, but I love it. And right now I can see the background of the Elite Man podcast. I can see seven foot Iron Man next to you. <laughs> badass office, man. I love it. And uh, real quickly, just to, to introduce you to my audience, I know I want to dive into your backstory in a moment, but you and I actually met probably two and a half years ago or so at my friend Aaron Marino's conference. Back then it was right. called StyleCon, now it's called Menfluential. And I, I mentioned to you a moment ago too, just to kind of refresh your memory, you didn't really remember me, but I remembered you because I spoke, I believe on the first day and then you spoke on the second day. And then when you spoke, after you spoke, there was literally a line of like 30 or 40 dudes lining up to come speak to you and pick your brain like follow-up questions because that's how good your presentation was. And it was just awesome, man. Like I was blown away myself by the presentation, loved it. And I got a ton out of it myself. So I think that day you actually talked about high ticket sales, right? Yes. And it was, it was so interesting because I, I don't speak at a, at a lot of other people's conferences anymore. So when I spoke at a conference and it's a group of elite men, really yeah. a group like different from different backgrounds, different age group from all over the world. And afterwards, there are so many questions. It, it was, it was a great experience. Yeah. And, at that time, I hadn't heard of you, and then I started looking you up after that because, again, the, the presentation was so good. Mm. But what were you doing at that time that, like, Aaron knew you, and, and how did, you know, he get acquainted with you? Well, I had Aaron on my podcast, I think, a while ago before, before mm-hmm. that, and I interviewed him about uh, his journey, his YouTube channel. And then from there, I said, hey, Dan, do you want to come and speak to, to my you know, group of great guys. I said, okay, sure. I don't do this a lot. I said, okay, sure. And, and I agree on that. And I just, then there, that's how we, how we met. Nice. And I mentioned to you too, a minute ago, you, when I, at the conference back then, two years ago, you had like 10 K subscribers on YouTube, Correct. Correct. which is still pretty good. I mean, that's not bad, but <laughs> flash forward two years right now, I just yeah. checked today. You have 1.6 million followers, uh, subscribers on YouTube. Yeah. And not to mention, I didn't say this to you before, but I literally see you all over the place, dude. I see you on Facebook when I pop up on Facebook. I see you on Instagram all the time when I'm on Instagram. I see you literally everywhere. You're one of the biggest names in business now. Omnipresence, right? <laughs> and dude, it's literally driving me nuts how much I see you. <laughs> but what do you, what do you attribute that crazy success to over the past couple of years? And I know you had incredible success before that in terms of yes. money and just yes. you know, having a ton of that. 
-hmm. But as far as uh, the popularity, the, the celebrity, which is basically what you have, what do you attribute that to over the past couple of years? I would say two things. Number one is consistency. So when I decided to go on YouTube and go on social media, that in back in 2014, that's when I kind of upload my, my first video. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think too much of it. It's actually kind of by accident. My video guy had a bunch of my speaking footage. He asked me what, I, what he should do with it. I said, well, do whatever you want. Well, it's too big of a file to send it to me. And I don't want to put a hard drive. So I told him, you know, I put it on YouTube. It's kind of free, whatever, right? And he did that. And he kind of, kind of edited it and chopped it apart. And before you knew it, it got, I was getting a little bit of traction. And I thought, that's interesting. I never, I never thought of, like, just I never thought of becoming a, like a YouTuber or, or yeah. a social media influencer. Because I'm an entrepreneur. That's what I've been doing my whole life since high school, right? Mm -hmm. And, but when I saw the, the power of social media and just by doing a little bit, that's when I realized, okay, this is big. Cause I've been marketing online since 2004. Wow. That's a long time. Like oh, yeah. that's like pre Facebook, pre Google. We're talking about like overture. I don't know if you have heard like Yahoo that, but back then, wow. right? Yeah. Yahoo. So search engine. Uh, where you actually pay to submit your website to Yahoo directory, <laughs> like long time ago, right? So then when I saw the, the power of social media, when I made the decision, okay, this is not something that, oh, it's, it's, it's like an afterthought. No, this is the business. This is the future. So I've struck, we structured my company to really run what we do to much more like a media company. Mm -hmm. So today, really, we are a global media and education company with like students are now in over 150 countries, right? So that's when the approach that we took and now with social media. So consistency and then also making this decision of treating this not as something that, oh, kind of do it on the side, but treat it almost like, like a business. So today, my, my social media team, just on social media, like YouTube, Facebook, we have 22 people just on the social media wow, side. Wow, that's time, ridiculous. Right? So we, we run it like a business. Yeah. Because we are reaching a lot of people, like you said. So last time I checked, we reach about 50 million, like 50 million people on a monthly basis, right? That's like all the views, all the, all the engagement combined yeah. from all the platforms, not including pay, but mm -hmm. organic is about 50 million wow. per month, right? So that's a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible, man. So... What is it about social media specifically that made you want to invest all this much time, energy, resources, and then, of course, money to pay your team to do all this work? What is it about this that just made you jump all in in 2014 or so? A lot of people, they think social media, does that mean, oh, does that, Dan, does that mean I have a huge social media following, right? Remember the talk that I, that I did right, a few years mm -hmm. ago, Justin, that I said a lot of people, they might have a big social media following but they cannot convert that into revenue, into dollars and, and income, right? Yep. They, they're fans, but you, you, you can't go to the bank and say, hey, man, you know, I'm, I'm very popular on Instagram. Look at all the fans <laughs> I have. Can I make a deposit, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or, hey, man, I have a lot of downloads on my podcast. Can I do a withdrawal? It, it doesn't work that way, right? Mm -hmm. So the way I approach social is from a very entrepreneurial point of view. That I do not give a damn. I don't give a fuck about being popular. It's not, it's not the point. So there's a big difference between social media following and social capital. And I believe 21st century, the three forms of capital that are the most valuable, number one, data, big data. Number two is social capital. And number three is human capital. That's what I believe in. And that's why I'm in the business that I'm in. So with social capital, meaning not just social following, not just the numbers, but you have a group of fans, a group of supporters, people who support and back you up, people who like you, trust, trust you, and know you, and respect you, and will do business with you. That's very, very different, right? So mm -hmm. when, you, when you understand that, then financial capital is no longer the most valuable because the fact is a lot of VCs are going out of business. A lot of venture capitalists are going out of business because they have so much money, there isn't enough good ventures for them to put money into. They have a lot of social, they have a lot of financial capital. They have no social capital. You've seen that, right? Justin, companies doing very well, not getting attention in the marketplace. People don't know who they are. Obscurity out of business yep. because they, have, they don't have social capital. But with social capital done properly, you can convert that into financial capital. Yeah. And you can also convert it into what I call relational capital. 
that's when the business all deals, opportunities, all of that happens. Through my social media, through, through that, I've been able to, to do some incredible business deals to work with, to partner with some just amazing entrepreneurs because of that. And because of my social following, I could pretty much get through to anybody. Yeah. Almost everybody, right? It's incredible what you can do with social media now. Has there ever been a time in the past, I mean, I'm sure you, you've known, like you said, you grew up with the Yahoo directory, all that crazy stuff. But even before that, though, can you think of anything where there's ever been an opportunity for people to just deliver incredible content and then be able to build up that, that incredible social clout and you know, transfer that to all forms of your business? You think about uh, back then to be a, a, a social, to be an influencer, to any, any kind of influence or to be a celebrity that it's traditional media, right? Mm -hmm. TV and movies and things like that. No one could have a little smartphone and you can film something, it could go viral, then it's been be, you know, seen by millions of people. So social media level the playing field. You and I, we have the same opportunity. We can compete with Coca-Cola. We could compete with Fortune 500 companies. It's, it is a, because it is not dictated by how long you've been business, how many locations, even how much money you have. It's only dictated by one thing. Do you resonate with your fans? Mm -hmm. It is the most honest, brutal, like playing field. You upload something, you, you upload a podcast, you upload a video, immediately the world will tell you, do they like it? Do they not like it? Do they want more of it? Do they want less of it? It's beautiful. I, I love that because that's the immediate feedback, right? Are you, are you good? Are you not good? We find out very, very quickly. You can talk all you want, mm. but, but let's, let's compete, right? Yeah. And, and the barrier of entry is low. Anybody can do it, but also the barrier of entry is high because to go from that level, like example, in my space, in the business and an entrepreneurship space, I mean, how many of them, how many people actually have over a million subscribers? I can count them with one hand. Yeah. Right? Very, very few because it's very, 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 very difficult. Now, if you're in an entertainment space, such as like prank or comedy, that's a different story. But I'm talking like education, very, very few. Yeah. Yeah. And what is it about you specifically? I can venture a few guesses and, and kind of say what I think it is, you're, you know, why you're so popular. I want to know what it is. I'll Tell say, me. I'll say in a minute, but what do you, what do you think specifically, Dan, about you, your style, your approach has been so, why it's been so successful the, the past few years? I know you're very brash and you say things and you call it how it is. Do you mm. think that's one of the reasons why people love you and that's why you're building up this social clout so quickly? Mm, I think, first of all, um, one is I'm Asian. Really? Uh, because then I resonate with a lot of, a lot of my fans and followers, they're minorities. Oh, wow. I didn't even think of that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that I'm one of the few, if not the only one yep. uh, that has an Asian background. I think that's number one. And number two, uh, I think like being straightforward, no bullshit, direct, that's kind of my signature for sure. But I think anyone who, if you watch my videos compared to, I won't name names, but like compared to other people's videos, you see uh, a lot of people's videos, they, you watch a lot of them, but you don't actually get a lot of practical things of what to do. Yeah. Versus I'm aiming for, say, hey, Justin, you watch one of my videos. I want you to walk away with something that you could implement. Mm. Like if you was to compare, I don't like to just like where it's like, okay, compare alcohol, like beer, you drink a lot of it. You don't, you don't there's not no much taste, right? Mm. That's just most people's content. Mine is like more like a red wine, right? Yeah. It, it, you can taste it. And you can see, and we should watch my content because of the depth and breadth of what I've done, right? That people could see that there's so much more to what I'm talking about. That anything I talk about is all speaking from experience, right? It's yeah. not because I, I read a book somewhere or, or I went to an event. It's just, hey, this is what I do. Mm. And people could see that, 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 I think that's a big part of it. And people, they, they want something new. They want something that's refreshing. They want something that's practical. They don't just, people, people get sick and tired of, we get it. Like Justin, I know we need to work hard. I know we work, need to hustle, but I'm hustling. What do I need to do? Yeah. Right. I'm working hard. What, tell me one step, one, two, three, what do I need to do? Most people don't talk about that when my, all my work is all about that. Right. Mm. Get the mindset, but let me give you exactly what you need to do. And that's, I think people find it useful and resonates with my audience. And there you go, right? 
Yeah. And I know you don't want to name names, but just when you said that, when you said that someone does come to mind and it's Gary V. I love Gary V. I actually think he's incredible. You know, very smart guy. One I of the love best, Gary too. Huge yeah, respect. One of the best business minds in the world for sure. 100%. The thing I don't like about Gary Vee is, like you said, it's a lot of the same hustle, 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 grind, you know, work, forget about all the bullshit. You can't go out and, you know, have fun, whatever, cut your friends off. It's like, I get all that shit and there's a lot of it that he says over and over again, but it's like, at some point we want some more of the actual meat. We want the content. We want the step, like do this, do that, yeah. you know, how to do the social media shit, how to do this. He kind of lacks a little bit sometimes in those areas. And that's the only problem I have with him. Again, I love him. I think he's doing great things. Mm -hmm. But guys like you, I think, stick out more when you're given tangible shit. When I've, I've, you know, I've sat um, preparing breakfast in the morning and I've watched <laughs> like video after video of, of different things that you talk about. So, you know, sales, high ticket sales, the social media thing, Instagram stuff. I was watching like a 10 or 15 minute video the other day about how you're blowing up your Instagram because I'm looking more into building my Instagram. So it's actual like real things. And I yeah. think that really resonates with people. And the thing that I was going to say, yes, yeah, I think, well, the thing I was going to say originally is I think it's the upfront brash nature. I think I just love it personally. Your assistant asked if we could swear on the podcast and I was yes. like, totally like, yes, I hope he swears. I love it. Thank it's God. Just, oh, it's good. it's, it's good. fucking, That's it's good. honest, man. People love that honesty. They love it, the rawness. So yes. go, go ahead, man. Good. Yes. So, and I think because everything that I've accomplished in my life, I mean, I, I earn it. I work hard for it. So, you know, there's some people that say, let's say, let's say you take athletes. You know, there's someone who, like, say, who's very good at basketball, then they're just naturally good. Mm -hmm. But the difference is because of my background. So you can see in terms of closing, there's some people who are naturally charismatic. They're good. They connect with people. And, and they, they, they're great closers. Awesome. Uh, I wasn't one of those people. I spoke with an accent. I was shy, right? I'm an ambivert. You know what ambivert is. So naturally, I'm actually an introvert that in certain cases, I can be an extrovert. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay? So I'm naturally actually an introvert. Yep. So everything I do that we people can see, hey Dan, you're awesome at closing. You're awesome, awesome on stage. You are you're awesome on social media. I could tell you, specifically, here are the fifty things I did to accomplish the results. Nothing is by accident. So you would ask me about YouTube. It's one thing because with the time that we have, that we would just say, hey Justin, you do this and did this. But if I was to break it down, I could spend days breaking down bit by bit exactly what I did. Same thing with Instagram. It's not, oh man, just keep posting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not just posting, mm -hmm. right? I could break it down into a science. Speaking is the same thing. So when you saw me spoke, that, oh, you said, you, I'm honored that you say I'm one of, the, one, of the, one of the better speakers there, right? That it's not because, oh, I'm naturally good. No, because I've been honing that skills for the last 10 years, right? So yeah. it's because of that. So when that happens, when I understand it, anything that I do very deeply, then I can teach it to other people. And I think that's what makes me a good educator, a good teacher, because I could break it down. It's one thing to say I'm good. Like, as they say to Gary, I hustle, I'm good, but how can I make you good? How can I make Justin good? How can I make Justin's audience good? I could close, that's one thing. Can I take someone who knows nothing about sales, doesn't have a sales background, get on the phone and close a $10,000 sale in 60 minutes up, that is good. That's a very different skill, right? Yeah. So I think, I think to me, my, my gift, my thing, the universe, my natural gift, it's my ability to, to simplify and to teach. Yeah. I remember, I remember too in the talk, you mentioned there was like maybe a dozen or a half dozen businesses that had failed like royally. Like they went bottom up and they just did terrible, even though you thought they were going to do good. Yeah. You've had a ton of failures in the past. You're having so much success now. And even a few years back, you were having incredible success because the time I met you at the conference, you're already, I think, a multimillionaire. What were you doing or what did you do to, to make those changes and actually start seeing success in some of those businesses? Did you go out and hire some of these mentors? And I want to ask you too, at some point about Dan Pena, because I know he was a big part of your uh, success yeah. and he's a mentor you have. Yes. Was it people like him and other mentors, coaches that really changed things around for you and really kind of started getting you back on the ball? A hundred percent. Because I think most entrepreneurs, they are so afraid to ask for help. Because, you know, they got into entrepreneurship, got into business because I want to be my own boss, right? I want to, yeah. I want to free, I want to be in control. I don't want to listen to other people. Well, but ignorance sometimes is very costly. So when we got into business, we try to do our own thing. It doesn't work. And I don't know why that we're so afraid to ask for help. That you cannot possibly have all the answers, right? 
So I always tell, I tell you see on all my, all my content, I say all the time again and again, you can see in my, you watch all my videos, you never hear me say, I am where I'm today because I'm so fucking awesome. <laughs> I always, always refer to the mentors that I've had, right? My first mentor, Alan Jacks, who taught me marketing and taught me copywriting, right? My second mentor, Dan Pena, who taught me actually how business, how big business works, finance, right? My third new mentor, Mr. Dwayne Clark, who's a billionaire, right? Who teaches me now purpose, culture, leadership. So I always refer, you always say, oh, I learned this from my mentor. I learned this from this mentor. I learned this from that mentor, from this, this person. So uh, it's not because I'm so great that I, 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 I do my part. But yes, I'm where I am today, 100% because my mentors, speaking of which, actually, I'm flying to Scotland um, in August, attending the Castle Seminar in August, we attending, learning. Wow. In December, That's... December, I'm going back to Castle, the hardcore KLA seminar, attending, not as a guest, as a student. Wow. Learning. Right? That's incredible. So I'm always learning. So, and, and Dan has been my mentor for more than a decade now. I'm still learning. It's so, incredible that you're able to humble yourself like that and actually go back to the basics and learn. Even though you've had this much success, everybody looks up to you. People pay you like thousands of dollars for an hour of coaching, yet you're going back to the basics and, and re-upping the, the crazy training that he has. Because, because I mean, to, to me, I'm a good teacher because I'm a good student. Like with just in the last, in 2018, 2018 uh, I calculated my accountant, right? My, my CFO told me, my, myself personally, Personal brain training, brain consultants. Our company spent about half a million dollars on education. Wow. Every half, year? Half, last year, half a million dollars. Wow. That is insane. That's just, awesome, though. Just think about it, though. <laughs> so why do we have the growth that we have? It's you, you invest. Mm. Most, is most people, I don't, even want to, I don't even want to spend $20 to buy a $20 book. I know. I mean, we got a problem, man, right? It's a big so fucking gotta, problem. It's a big fucking problem. So, <laughs> so then I'm constantly, because the more you know, the more you don't know. Um, and people look at what I do. I don't think, I mean, I think I am okay. I don't see myself as like, like compared to Mr. Dwayne Clark, my, my third mentor. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm a small fish. Really? So there's so much I, I could grow. Yeah, you know, compared to most influencers, yes, we're at the top of our game, but I don't compare myself to that. I compare myself to, like people who have gone do much bigger things, right? Super. So that's why I'm not like, oh yeah, you know, we reach 50 million people. I don't want to reach 50 million people. I want to reach a billion people. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a different expect. I have high expectation for myself than, than most people have for me. So what is your goal right now then? Or what are your goals like you see in the next 10 years? Is that what you want to be? You want to be a billionaire and you're following like these guys, Pena, Clark, you're following their steps to try to make that happen? I actually, don't, I, don't, I don't care about the amount so much. Really? Uh, that, I mean, the, the dollar thing, the billion, I, I don't really care about that. Uh, more so that I want to, just like yesterday, it's funny, you asked me this question. Yesterday I calculated, I'm not counting like the, 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 like the, the house payment, car payment, right? But yesterday, my wife and I sit down, I spent $12.35 the whole day. My breakfast <laughs> and lunch. Right? The whole day. Yeah. Like, that's my expense, right? I don't, I don't spend that much. Um, so... And to me, like, it's, uh, I like nice things, don't get me wrong. Like, I have the nice things, I have the car, the house, and I have all, all that stuff, right? But that, that doesn't motivate me anymore. Like, I, I did that when I was, like, you know, in my late 30s. It's not, it's not a big deal. My whole thing is about impact. Yeah. I want to impact a lot of people, and that's why, I've, that's why I'm in the business that I'm in. Why, why am I in the education space? Because I want to create change, not inside the education system, but outside the education system because I think the education system is out of date. Yeah. That a lot of young guys, young people, men and women, that as you know, they graduate with a lot of student loan, a lot of student debt, with a degree that, which is not that useful. And they're kind of stuck, so, so what do they do? And I just almost like find myself in a position with great power, comes with great, like, great responsibility, like a kind of Spider-Man. Oh yeah. Because I have the influence and I have the reach. That, this is what I want to do. Mm. So it's like people ask me the question. I actually was on a podcast. People asked me the question. Hey, Dan, if you were, if you have 10 times more money today, 10 times more money, what would you do? Guess what I said? Well, same thing. Same thing. Yeah. 
and I know because I have ten times more money compared to what I had before, when I had a lot of money already. So then I know I, I'm. This is my purpose. This is my passion. This is this is what I love to do. That's I, awesome, I man. I won't change it for a thing. So you ask me, what if I hit, you know, a billion? And same, same. Maybe a little differently, but I will do the same thing. I like to teach, right? Yeah. Something like to golf that would drive me crazy because that would bore out of my mind. I am not interested in that, right? <laughs> I like to teach. Yeah. It's like the people who retire and then they have absolutely nothing to do. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do like, that. Yeah, no. I did that when yeah. I was 27. Like, it's, it's not what it's all crack up to be. It's good, man. You have these, these incredible goals and it seems like you keep fulfilling them because you're just like constantly driven to do it. And I actually, I actually like to – see, just looking on the outside, I would have thought you were a billionaire kind of guy. Like, you want to be – that's what drives you is the money because obviously I don't really know you well – but I actually like and appreciate the fact that that's not really what you're after. You're doing what you want to do right now and you just want to make it on a grander scale, a bigger scale. That's really, I think, what's more important. And I could, I could say, I would say right now, I'll say on podcasts, I'll say on TV, I don't have kids right now. If I have kids, I'm not leaving my kids a dime. Really? Nope, zero. Oh, shit. Wow. Public record, zero. They, wow. They better, they better fucking earn it. <laughs> the worst thing I can do to my kids is give them a lot of money. Yeah. Why rob them of the, the, the potential of, of learning about the work ethics? Why? It's the, 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 the fastest way to ruin their life. Mm. Spoiled and lazy. And Absolutely not. 100%. Yeah. No. no. What, so would you do, though? what would you do to, to your kids if you had kids? How would you make them and, like, have this incredible work ethic that you have, this drive, the, the motivation? I've this a lot. I've yeah, thought, what would you do then? First of all, uh, I would give them two things. I would leave them my library. Cool. I'll leave them my connections. And your connections? Business connections. connections, yeah. Yeah, business connections, and they can make it happen. Now, maybe I've thought about, like, I really have seriously thought about this. Maybe I'll put my, uh, my, what I've done, my wealth in a trust. Whatever amount is, right, in a mm -hmm. trust um, for charity work. But then maybe, maybe I'm thinking of still considering that if my kids can accumulate the same amount of money, then we'll unlock that and give them control of the trust. If they can make the same amount. That's pretty yeah. cool. So they can on get the, to that level, the boss level, because, and they get because, it. <laughs> because I know they made it on their own to that level. Now they qualify to handle that money. Yeah. Maybe. It's pretty cool. I like that idea. I like that idea. Right. And then they, I, know, and then they don't, I know they don't need it. Yeah. Good. When they don't need it, I know they can use it wisely. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <sighs> This episode is sponsored by my friends over at Vincero Watches. Typically, finding a watch that is high quality, good looking, and precise costs a pretty penny. But Vincero Watches is here to change that. Vincero Watches creates exceptionally crafted watches and they do it without breaking the bank. You're not going to find a better made watch for this good of a price anywhere else. There is a reason Vincero has over 16,000 five star reviews because their bold timepieces masterfully blend form and function into one affordable time piece. Whether you're preparing for a first date or to crush a business meeting, a classic wristwatch is something every man needs. There's always going to be an occasion where you really want to impress and your Apple Watch just won't cut it. Vincero timepieces are showstoppers. I'm telling you, you're going to get complimented every time you wear it. I recently got my own Vincero watch and I'm absolutely blown away with how incredibly cool, high quality, and beautiful this watch looks. Seriously, I've never owned a watch that's looked as fresh as my new Vincero timepiece does. I honestly am in love with it and it's truly a head turner. I've gotten so many compliments and random people going up to me demanding I give them the details of how to get their own watch too. I'm telling you, you are going to absolutely love your Vincero watch. And the best part is for a limited time, Vincero is giving my Elite Man listeners an incredible deal. Vincero is offering 15% off your entire order with the coupon code ELITE. Just head on over to VinceroWatches.com and use the coupon code ELITE for 15% off. That's VinceroWatches.com and the coupon code ELITE. Dan, for those people listening who don't have really any money, maybe they're still doing the nine to five thing and they want to get, they want to be successful. They want to be financially independent where they don't have to work these crazy hours and they're actually doing something that you're doing right now that I'm doing that we actually love to do. Like we're making an impact on the world. We enjoy it. Yep. It fulfills us and the money's good. What do you recommend to these people to take that next step? Like, do you recommend them jumping on social media and creating content, doing this stuff? Or is there something a little bit different that you actually would suggest? I think first of all, in life, we go through four stages. 
okay? And I talk about it in my new book, Unlock It. So the first stage, stage is what I call survival. You and I, we've been there, yeah. try, trying to make ends meet, trying to pay the bills just to, just to get by every month. You're worried about, hey, what, could I make rent, right? Mm -hmm. I make, that's survival, first level. Second level is what I call security. Now you've got some, you know, maybe you have a, a decent business uh, employee or you've got a decent job. You've got some income coming in, right? You, you've, you've got a roof over your head. Like you don't have to worry, but you're not successful, but at least you're okay, right? Nice yeah. and steady. And that's probably 95, 97% of the population in the world. And then for a small percentage of the people, they'll evolve to what I call success. It's transitioning from success, uh, from security to success. Now, when you are successful, you don't just have everything you need, you have everything you want. Mm. So tell, tell me something that you want, like something, one of your dreams on, on, your, on your list, like something that's materialistic, something, anything. I'm thinking Rolls Royce. There you go, Rolls Royce. Yeah. So you're not just driving a car, you're driving a Rolls Royce, Yeah. right? You don't just have a, 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 a Mercedes, you, you've got a Bentley, right? Yeah. You, know, you don't just live in, 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 a, in, a, in a condo, you live in a penthouse, right? Like that's, you have everything that you want and more. You travel, you don't travel economy, you travel like first class or even private, who knows, right? Mm -hmm. Most people, they're stuck at the success level. I was stuck at a success level for 10 years of my life. Chasing success, chasing achievement, ego driven. But I didn't know there's one more level, which is significance. When you're living a significant life, it's no longer about you, it's no longer, no longer about he, your ego. It's about what, are, what, what can you bring to the world? How can you utilize your gifts, your talents to the highest degree to impact people? Now, the funny thing is this, Justin, when you are living a significant life, guess what? All those three levels are taken care of. Mm. You automatically get survival. You automatically get security. You automatically get success. When, I'm, when I don't focus on money, guess what? Money comes to me faster, easier, more effortlessly. Problem is, people at survival, they're trying to do significant work. That doesn't work. That does not work. You need to work your way up so that when you accomplish success, when you accomplish certain level of success, then you don't have to worry about it. But you're not thinking about it all the time. Now you can focus. When you are worrying about paying your bills, let's say you're at nine to five right now, it's very difficult for you to focus on other people. It's just a fact. It's human nature. Because you're worried about your lights get shut off, right? You're worried about, hey, can I, can, I, can I take care of my family? Can I take care of my kids? Can I feed my baby? It's very difficult to worry about how can I help more people. It just doesn't, that's not your awareness. You're not at that level of awareness. But when you don't have to worry about that, you're like, okay, now I've got, some free time, I, I free up my mental bandwidth. What can I do, right? Think about your podcast in the beginning, we were talking about this, when no one was listening, all you could think about is, how can I get more downloads, man? Like how can, that's all you could focus on. But when you're already getting downloads, you come from sponsorship, you know, you're making some good money, you're like, you, you, you're like more at ease, right? Yeah. Or like, hey, I just, I, now I can bring on guests that I, that I wanna talk to, that, that I wanna learn from. Hey, maybe this guest is, would not be as popular in terms of downloads, but I want to interview this person. Mm. And that's perfectly okay. See, now you're now doing more of what you want to do. So I always say, it's, people look at what I do, they think I'm all about money, when it's actually the opposite is true. <laughs> but you cannot get to everything else without money. Yeah. So I don't pretend to be, oh yeah, don't think about, no, think about money. Get that taken care of so you can get that out of the way. So you can focus on life. I don't yeah. pretend to be, oh yeah, no. You want, you want influence? I, I want to bring awareness to my cause. Very difficult if I don't have influence, if I don't have reach, if I don't have capital. It's a fact. I might have a big heart, but if no one's paying attention, then who cares? But today, if I would say, Dan Locke supports a certain cause, I can do much more for that cause. I can make that much of a difference versus if I'm a nobody. Where do you recommend? I, I think you're right too. I think most people are stuck between two and three, the security and success phases. Like yeah. that's really where they get most of their lives anyways. And a lot of people just live their entire lives in, the, in those spaces. But where do you think people start? Like what are the actual places or ideas that like you recommend as far as making money goes 
to really help them get to that next place where they can, you know, then start to focus on things like the significance and the meaning of their work and what they're actually doing to impact the world. I know you talk about things like high income skills and there's a various assortment of those. Is that one of the things or is that one of the areas that you really focus on? That's why in the book I talk about this, right? I talk about most guys, most men, if you're working in a nine to five or you're stuck in a, in a job, don't just go out there and start a, a business. I think that's one of the things talking about Gary, again, a huge respect for Gary, yep. um, the difference in philosophy yep. that I don't believe anyone should start a business when they are desperate. The worst time to start a business is when you're desperate yeah. or when you have no money mm. because a business takes time. It's like a little baby. It takes time to grow. You might think, oh man, I'm going to be profitable in one year. Well, it might take you five years, dude. Right? It might tell you fucking like, who knows? Six years. Who knows? Right? Yeah. Uh, the first thing that I recommend everyone that I teach, and all my students, is this is to develop your high income skill. That's the first step. Now, I define high income skill as a skill that can make you $10,000 or more per month. That's it. So I teach you the wealth triangle. So think about wealth triangle. The first step is what I call high income skill. Now, with high income skill, now you are earning income. And income is king, right? Income. Once you're making $10,000 a month, guess what? For most people, Justin, wouldn't you agree? They're, they're okay. As long as you don't do stupid things with it, you're okay. Yeah. You're making good money. You're paying the bills. You don't have to worry about it, right? That's awesome. You're paying off some debt. Awesome. Then once this, is, this is gives you security. Once you can do that, then you can transition into the second part of the wealth triangle, which is what I call scalable business. Now it's a business that you could scale to a, a, a much bigger level. And that's good. Third, high return investments. Now you're getting into investments. Now you identify high return investments as investments that could provide you with return 10% or, or, or more per year, year in and year out. It could be 7%, it could be 8%, doesn't really matter, but roughly like a decent return year in and year out. Not speculation. So think about this. Your high income skills give you income. Your scalable business gives you profit. Your high return investment builds your net worth. That's how I build my entire, all, all, my, all my wealth. I follow this. All my students follow this. A lot of successful entrepreneurs follow this. If you skip the step and you see people, you know what? I have no business acumen. I've never done business before. I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to start a scalable business. Guess what? You're fucked. <laughs> Because you have no idea how business works. And you yeah. see, see this on Shark Tank. You see this on Dragon Stand. People mortgage their home. They invented a little board game. And now they are like $200,000 in debt. They, they, I mean, they, they lose everything or they go bankrupt. Mm. Versus a high income skill. So let me give you a very perfect example. See if this makes sense. Let's say you're just getting started. Nine to five. You say, you know what? I'm going to develop my high income skill. I'm going to learn closing, which is what I teach, right? So instead of quitting my job in my spare time, kind of like a side hustle, I'm going to do closing in evening. And, we're going to I'm going to, and I'm going to close for companies. Now what I teach is high ticket. Let's say you close a $3,000 sale for, for an influencer, for a thought leader, for, for, for someone in, in that space. And for every $3,000 sale, a package, you get 10% of that. How much you make? $300. $300, right? And let's say you just close one sale, one sale a day, 300 bucks. That's it, 300 bucks. Let's say you only work, I don't know, five days a week in your spare time, right? That's $1,500 a week, a week. You do that, like you say, you know what? I'm not even gonna do that, like, you know, full time and go to like two, two let's say two weeks in a month. That's $3,000 additional income that you can make. So when you take that, now you develop your ability to close, the ability to sell, the ability to influence, now, when you start your business, can you, can you see how you're in a much better place? Oh, yeah. When you take that into starting a business, hey, you already have good closing skill, right? You can talk to vendors, you can talk to investors, you can talk to customers. You know how to generate revenue. That gives you such strong foundation. Then the chances of you succeeding is much higher versus you've heard the statistics. What, 95% of small businesses fail in the first five years. Some say 97%. I don't care what percentage is, it's fucking high. It's just fucking high, right? <laughs> so your chances of dying is high. Why? Because most people are not ready. They don't have the skill sets of entrepreneurs, of, of being a successful entrepreneur, and they jump into entrepreneurship. 
you know what? It doesn't matter how positive you are. It doesn't matter how 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 much you want to hustle. If you don't know what you're doing, <laughs> that does not matter, right? It doesn't matter if you have a positive attitude or negative attitude. It's not about that. Right? You got to have the skill set, right? If I was to say, hey, Justin, go fly this plane. Hustle, man. Just, yeah. You don't know how to fly the fucking plane because no one <laughs> taught you how to fly the fucking plane. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's a great and, analogy. And, and, and it's not like, oh, I, I, I follow two people and I see the Instagram once a week. Now you know how to fly a plane. Mm. It's not like that, man. It's yeah. not like that at all. So really think about these. And that's why I believe the wealth triangle. Develop the five high income skill first and then transition to scalable business if you want to and then transition to high return investments. You've got no money, should you jump into real estate, yes or no? No. No, because you don't have high income skills, right? You're working on 95, should you mortgage everything you've got to start a business? No. You've got a business going, but it's not throwing, throwing, throwing off enough profit. Should you take the risk and invest in cryptocurrency? No. You see how this helps you make all your financial decisions. You know exactly where you are, you know exactly what you need to do. All clarity. There's no confusion. Yeah. It sounds so simple. Took me fucking 10 years to, to develop this. If you guys haven't heard about Roan, you're really missing out. Roan is a men's performance lifestyle and premium activewear brand that is engineered for unparalleled quality and comfort. They are an absolute necessity for guys on the go. It doesn't matter if you're training in the gym or jumping on international flights. They are your new go-to men's clothing brand. My favorite is their Element V-necks and crew neck t-shirts. These are high quality, they fit perfectly, and they look great. Just the way a t-shirt or V-neck should look on a man. In my opinion, they are some of the nicest shirts I've ever worn. But Roan doesn't have just great t-shirts. They also have great long sleeve tank tops, jackets and pullovers, pants, shorts, swimwear, underwear, shoes, socks, and all kinds of other stuff you are absolutely going to love. And now Roan has just released their amazing new commuter collection, perfect for looking great and staying comfortable at the office or on the go. Roan's commuter collection is the perfect alternative to the everyday workwear, offering everything from pants, polos, shorts, and shirts that are all lightweight, comfortable, and wrinkle free. The commuter collection is good for all weather, anytime from a weekday in the workplace to a weekend barbecue. Go to roan.com slash elite today and use promo code elite to get 20% off your first purchase. That's R-H-O-N-E dot com slash elite, promo code elite for 20% off. Roan.com slash elite, promo code elite. It's awesome, man. I love the wealth triangle. I love exactly how you go step by step through it. And I love also the fact not only are you building up the skills that you need to then apply that to the business that you want to scale and be successful, which is probably the most important thing, but you also are building up that cash flow and you have the Bingo. cash coming in. So you, you, can, you actually have the ability to fuck up and make mistakes in your business because you have the cash that's going to keep supporting you. It's a good insurance to have when you're trying to scale things. Exactly. And then you're not worried. You're not, oh man, I'm going to pay my bill. You know, you know what? Maybe because when you're desperate, you know how it is in business. You take on clients you shouldn't take on, right? Mm -hmm. You make decisions based on fear instead of based on, on like, like decisions and data, right? You just, you, you do dumb things when you're desperate. When you're not desperate, you can wait. You don't have to take on that deal. You can take some time to actually build up the business, lay a good foundation. And that's how you have that steady growth. Versus you can see a lot of entrepreneurs that are so frantic, they panic all the time. They have to because that's the, the only source of income. And that's when they do stuff that's like a little bit on the, to me, on the, on the, on the gray line, right? Yeah. That's like, mm, which they shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to talk about sales with you in a moment because in my opinion, you're one of the best sales guys in the world. I had Grant Cardone on the show, I think last year or something like that. And he claims to be the number one sales guy in the world. <laughs> you know, you guys are both up there. I want to ask you about that in a moment, but what are some of the other high income skills that you can think of that people could potentially do or maybe get good at and, and just figure out exactly what is good for them? What are some of the ones off the top of your head? Uh, number one, first of all, I never, and you'll never see me claim to be the number one sales guy in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm always a student of sales, period. So when people say, oh, I'm the king of high ticket sales uh, because on the Iconic Concierge magazine gave me that title. Um, but I'm always a student of sales. It's so, a good you know, title though. 
Yeah, I, I'm never. Oh, I'm the number one sales trainer, and in fact, in fact, I don't see myself as a sales trainer. Really? No. Nope. How so? Because people see what I do, and it's like some people they they ask them, "Oh, Dan, Dan, what do you do?" They would say, "Oh, uh, I'm a YouTuber." Do you think I'm a YouTuber? No. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm just a YouTuber. No. Right? Some, oh, so Dan, much more. Are you a speaker? You see me spoke at a conference. Am I a speaker? Gotcha. You know, uh, yeah. so am I a sales trainer? No, I, I definitely have one of the most successful sales program in the world. Uh, now, you know, with students in all of the country, um, but that's not that's not what we do. It's like a tiny bit of what I do. But I like people to think that that's what I do. That's cool. Yeah. So, yeah. but that's not what I do. So, talk about sales. Go ahead. Uh, well, high income skills besides sales, what are some of the other ones off the top of your head that you can think of? Closing. Closing. Copywriting. Copywriting is a good one, yeah. Could be, could be social media, digital marketing. Yep. Right, that's another So many one. different things in there too, right? Programming, coding. Yeah. That's another one. But there's so many of them. Facebook that's ads, right? Facebook like, ads. Yeah. You, can, you, can, you can now break it down into now different platforms too, right? so, Yeah. There's it so doesn't many. have to be a digital marketing. I have a friend of mine who is a ballroom instructor, like ballroom mm -hmm. dance instructor. He makes over 10000 a month. Oh, wow. That's a high income skill. Yeah, you're right. That's I didn't even think that's, of that. Yeah. yeah, that's a, that's a per, like private lessons. That's a, that's a perfectly good high income skill. As long as you are offering your talent, your skill set in a, to the marketplace in exchange of money, you're still trading hours for dollars, but you're trading hours for high dollars. Mm. And then that to me, it's a it's a good high income skill. So it doesn't have to be marketing and sales related. I like it because that's the space that I'm in, and that's what I teach. But it's not limited to that at all. All right, so sales in a second, but before that. Where did you come up with this idea then to market yourself, to charge people basically 10 times what everyone else is charging? And don't get me wrong, the value is there. People pay you day after day for the value and I can see the value is there. But where did you come up with that idea that you were worth that value and that you needed to charge this value when basically nobody else was doing it? <laughs> uh, first of all, I didn't come up with it. Okay. Uh, actually through my, my mentor. You popularized it though. You definitely I popularized it. For sure. So let, let me give you the, uh, let's share a quick story with you. So at the time I was in my early twenties, I was a copywriter, right? Copywriter mm -hmm. and kind of out of the, out of the, just like new, new guy on a new kid on the block, right? 20 somewhat years old, still speak with a very thick accent. I still speak with an accent today. So, <laughs> and I was working with clients or right? I was writing sales copy for them and I was charging like a few hundred dollars and things like that. So I was struggling to pay my bills, right? I was hustling but I was not paying my bills. <laughs> so, so what's the problem? And then I talked to my mentor, Alan, my first mentor. And Alan was like, hey man, you're charging too little. There's, there's, there's no money. You should charge more. So and then we, we talked about it. And then finally I was now, instead of charging like two, three hundred dollars, now I'm charging a thousand dollars. So someone was to hire me to write some sales copy back then, I charged them one thousand dollars per project. Now after a few months of that, I talked to my mentor, Alan, and he said, you know, Dan, you should bump up your price. I'm like, like, what do you mean? You should bump up your price. You charge more money. I'm like, okay, so you like, should I do like 10%? I thought like, instead of 1,000, $1,100? He's like, no, fuck that. Double your price. <laughs> I'm it. like, are you, in, like, I was like, are you fucking insane? Like, <laughs> I can't do that. I'm, I'm a new kid on the block. I don't have enough experience, right? People would never pay me that kind of money. They will never trust me. They think I'm, I'm, I'm greedy. I'm going to lose all my clients. But one thing about me is that it's very good. I'm very coachable. So Alan said, just, just, just do it. Just listen to me. Here's what I want you to do. Go back and practice in front of the mirror. When people ask you how much you charge, when you quote the price, you practice. So I was practicing in front of my mirror. As I look in the mirror and I say, so how much you charge? $2,000, right? I was so nervous. Like it's insecurity practice and practice and people ask me, so how much you charge Dan for copywriting for this project? I would say, uh, $2,000. Still a little hesitation, but I, I, I did my best, right? Mm. And they said, okay. I'm like, <laughs> fuck, what do you mean like, okay, <laughs> right? $2,000, okay, fine. I was getting more clients. I was getting more clients at $2,000 versus like three, $400. Wow. Interesting. A few months later, talked to my mentor again, Alan. I said, you know what? I said, what? You should increase your price again. <laughs> Are you serious? I just increased my price a few months ago. 
Now you're busy, you're filling your appointment book, you're filling your calendar, you should increase your price. What? Double it again. Wow. You are out of your fucking mind. <laughs> like, this is no fucking, like, seriously? Yep, $4,000. No. Just go. Practice. See how that works. Again, practice in, the mirror, in front of the mirror, quote my client, $4,000. No resistance. A few months later, talk to my mentor again. He said, uh huh. I said, no, 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 no. You know what I'm going to say? He said, no, 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 no. He said, you should increase your price. What? Like, what, $8,000? Yeah, sounds good. 8000 No! <laughs> no! Right? No, you know what? Fuck that. Let's just make it 10000 Wrong number. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> $10,000? Like, in my mind, as a young guy, like, as a young guy, I can't even, like, how many zeros is that? <laughs> like, that's such a, such a huge amount of money I could not even compute. Like, in my mind, I can't, I can't, like, this is within a year's time. Wow. Like, from 1000 like, to 10000 he said, you practice it. So I remember I was getting a phone call, prospect called me, asking me about what I do and things like that. And then we get to the price. He needs a copywriter, a project, a multi-step campaign. So then how much you charge? Now I've been practicing, Justin, like I've been practicing, right? I said, 10K. He said, whoa, 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 whoa. That's, that's, that's way more than, than what I had a budget for. Like, I, like a friend of mine would refer you to me, but... I didn't think you would charge this much money. Like I thought he'd like pay you like four or five K or something. I said, yeah, but that's the old price. And, <laughs> and, I, said, and I said, your, your project is much more complex. You need multiple campaigns. So 10 K. He said, well, I, you know, I, I, I don't think I can afford it. I, I need to talk to my partner. So we hung up, right? <clears throat> Call me back very quickly within a day. He said, then I've talked to my business partner that although like that's what not what we budget for like you charge actually double what we budget for but you come highly recommended so can you do half down and then half when it's complete i shut the hell up and i'm like yes right <laughs> and then and then like hit mill yes and then i unmute and say that, that, that would work <laughs> that's actually how i do it right and that was my first like ten thousand dollar sale and I learned something from that incident. What did I learn, Justin? It's, it didn't take more effort to charge something for 10 times more money. In some cases, it takes less effort. And that changed my life. From then on, I knew a lot of the price resistance that we have comes from us. The price resistance exists in our mind, not in the prospect's mind. We project our own insecurities our own values. I'm not going to spend that much money, so they're not going to spend that much money. You're not your customer. And think about the clients you have, like all the people that you work with. I want you to think about, do me a favor, think about the people that nickel and dime you, who are cheap. Describe them to me as client. Nickel and dime, what are, what are they like? Tough to work with. Don't Tough really do with. what you say. Don't, okay, don't really follow your instructions. What else? Yeah, uh, rescheduling all the time. Not respectful of your time. Yeah, we're not respectful of the time. Right. One thing after the other, yeah. You go, you go the extra mile, do they appreciate it? No. No. Tell me the clients who pay you the most. They do everything you say. They're on time. They're going over the top with you know questions and just taking in your information. They're respectful. They appreciate it. They're f fucking incredible. They're awesome. They're, they're, they're the people you want to work with. There you go. Now, you could be providing the same service. The difference is in price. So what I've learned is in human psychology, the, the, the more they pay, the more they pay attention. Yeah. So you're not doing anyone any favor by charging less. In fact, you are doing them a disservice by charging them less. They pay more. They pay more attention. They get skin in the game. They take you more seriously. They follow through. Guess what? They get better results. They, you get more referrals. They tell the people about you. Versus you're selling to people who are cheap, who don't appreciate what you do, who don't value you, who don't respect you. Why? Because of your insecurity or your lack of ability to close high ticket sales, period. Mm. You fix that, you fix your business, right? It's, it's, business is not a game of volume. This is a game of margin. I'll yeah. say that one more time. Business is not a game of volume. It's a game of margin. Yeah. Not making enough money with this kind of sales, more sales doesn't solve your problem. You need margin, you need profit. The way to get a profit, the fastest way, increase your price.
not the only way, but it is one of the fastest ways. Mm. Does this apply just real quick to physical products or is this mainly just for like personal branding and things like that? All products. Think about, All products. Yeah. It's th- think about when economy is bad, right? What in the marketplace, what, who affects this? Think about the, the crisis that we had not many, not long ago. Mm. Which, think about what category affects the most. Middle class, below middle class. Middle class? Because you think about people at the, 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 the fluent market. Yeah, you know, maybe the, the net worth shrink a little bit, but they still have a lot more disposable income than everybody else. So if you want to re- recession-proof your business, like I always say, right? Sell to, you know, players with money. P-W-M. <laughs> right? Players with money. Mm. Because they have disposable income. They're, they're, it's, it's okay. But with, when someone is come trying to decide, should I spend money with you or should I pay rent? I'm going to pay rent. Good but versus, versus, like, let's say, let's say you run a, let's say, Justin, let's say you run a Ferrari dealership. Actually, you know what? Let's say you run a Rolls Royce dealership. Yes. Okay. Rolls Royce. <laughs> and you have a lot of people that you could target, right? Do you want to target someone who never bought a Rolls Royce in, in their entire life? Or do you want, you want to target someone who's already bought two Rolls Royce? Someone that's bought two. Why? The guy's already got bought two. They're more likely to buy a third. There you go. There you go. Yep. Why, why try to convince people who may not have the ability or may, nev- may never have the desire for your product? Why not to, to talk to people who have the desire, who have the ability to buy what you have to offer? It makes your life so much easier. Mm. So much easier, right? So that's, that's what I teach. You can, I still, you can still reach the masses, but I'm saying high, like high-end product doesn't matter, luxury product. Look at, look at the category, luxury. There's always a market for it if they do it right. Not every brand, but if they do it right. Dan, I want to wrap up in just a couple minutes. I know you, you got to get running here. We started a little later, but real quick follow up on this and then we'll get a last question in on sales. Mm. As far as having the mindset or the, the philosophy of a high end product or a high ticket cost for uh, doing services with yourself or your whatever business you have, how do you get into the mindset of charging that exorbitant price of say 10 X what everyone else is charging or even just, you know, a few times higher than whenever everyone else is, is charging. Can you do that right away? Or do you have to do what you did, which is basically get to those incrementally over time? Uh, I used to believe you got to do it incrementally. Simply not true. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll share a quick metaphor with you. You know exactly what I mean. Let's say you are, you are a lady. Okay. And you want to find your, soulmate your ideal high ticket client right you want to find your soulmate and you're single you've been single for a while right now you want to find that person do you imagine if you go out there and you just you know what i'm gonna date a whole bunch of people i'm gonna lower my value i'm gonna go on a date with anyone who even who even like it's half decent yeah what kind of reputation are you creating in the marketplace easy cheap Right? Gets around, yeah. Gets around, right? But you're like, I'm just, I'm, I'm just trying to build up my reputation, man. I'm, I'm trying to get the word out there. <laughs> it does not work in dating. It does not work in business. Mm. Because the value that you set, the tone that you set, it, sets, it starts from day one. Are you going to be the Cadillac? Are you going to be the like, Hyundai? Are you going to be Rolls Royce? Day one is a positioning issue. And you cannot solve a marketing problem with just lowering your price. It's a marketing problem. Then solve it with marketing. People are not buying your stuff at five thousand. People are not buying your stuff at five hundred. Let's figure out how do you sell that high, higher ticket price, that premium price, so you attract better customers. You can deliver better experience. You have higher profit margin, so you can scale your business. Right? When you don't have the profit margin, you can't scale. And the problem is when you compete on price, you, die, you live by price, you die by price. You, you do something for $1,000, I'm a competitor, I'm going to go in, come in and say, I'm going to offer the exact same thing what you do at 900. Then what are you going to do? You say, oh, I'm going to lower it to 800. Then I'm going to lower it to 700. You, you don't have, whatever competitive advantage that you think you have to be taken away like that. Not when you're at the top. Not when you're at the top. Because at that level, people are not, we're not comparing with, with price. 
when you buy a Rolls Royce, you're not looking at, hey, I, I save more money or it's cheap. You're not thinking, you want a fucking Rolls Royce. The <laughs> yeah. guy could upsell you, hey, you know, Justin, you know, you know the Rolls Royce on Bella is going to charge you X amount of dollars, right? You want to up, upgrade, it's gonna, the, this kind of seat, this kind of color, it's going to charge you X amount of dollars. You're like, I'm buying a Rolls Royce, who gives a fuck, right? <laughs> just, just bill me, right? Yeah. You're selling a, a different car, different audience, different thing. Mm. different thing so mm -hmm. it's it's that but now the mindset thing i can explain to you intellectually however most people need to go through like a transformation right that's why they go through my a seven week training my high ticket closer program i basically kind of like think about the brain open the brain up i take the brain i kind of like shake it and put it back because <laughs> they've got so much bullshit in their yeah. mind about price about positioning about things that are simply not true it's not about the techniques it's not about the script it's not about that it's about your belief about your worth when you when you believe in that then you can go out there and charge what you're worth i have no problem telling people i charge 10k an hour 10k an hour for my time when i usually charge 10k even back then 20 something 10k for a project that would take me a month to do it's good right but you grow so just wrapping things up, what is, I don't know, I could talk to you on it, honestly, man, for probably a couple more hours. We're going to have to do another follow-up at some point down the line, get you back on the show. What is your best sales technique? Because I want to get that from you. I know there's so many different out there. I know there's so many different that you talk about and, and kind of ways we can do this, but just real quickly, what is your best strategy for getting people to buy what it is that you're selling, whether that's a personal brand, whether that's a, a physical product or your business you, you, you've heard of the uh, ABC of closing which yeah is always be closing I think it's outdated I think it's wrong I think it used to work in the 80s that doesn't work today especially mm -hmm. not when you're selling high ticket you're selling something for ten dollar like dollar store that's a different story okay yeah when you're selling something that's high ticket that's significant uh, the new ABC of closing always be caring People don't give a shit what you do until, until they know that, unless they know that you care. Now, what a concept, right? Actually care about your prospects. Care to the point where if your product's not a good fit, you tell them it's not a good fit. You tell them, you know what, Mr. Prospect, I don't think this is the right thing for you to do at this moment. I don't think I, 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 we have the best solution in the marketplace, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you don't close with your mouth, you close with your ears, which listening skill is the most undervalued skill in closing. Most sales guys, if I, if I think of, if I say, hey, Justin, describe a typical sales guy to me. What do they sound like? Loud, in your Loud, face. In your face. Kind of cocky. Cocky. Yeah. Arrogant, pushy. Pushy. What else? Um, what are they after? Your money. Your money. Gr greedy. Greedy. Yeah. Right? Slimy, stick oil, used car Slimy, selling. yes. <laughs> okay, there you go. So if that's most people's perception they have when it comes to salespeople, guess if you want to be a top salesperson, guess what do you have to be? The opposite of that. Yeah. Opposite. You talk less. You slow down. You ask questions. You find out about their needs. You give them, you lead them to the cell. You don't try to like twist their arm and push them. No. You give them space. Like it's the opposite of what everybody else does. That's what I do. Mm. Right. In the beginning, sometimes in the, like I could go into this, like so much more depth, but sometimes oh, yeah. in the beginning of the conversation, in the sales call, in the first three, four minutes, I would tell the prospect, you know what, Mr. Prospect, it's okay to say no to me. When was the last time you hear a salesperson tell you it's okay to say no? <laughs> and never, never happens. Yeah. It never happens. So when you do that, it takes the pressure off. It's like, oh, okay. Okay. That, that, that you know that the person sitting in front of you on the phone, he or she is not going to push you. Why would I want to push you if it's not your conclusion, if it's not your decision? You're going to change your mind, you're going to have what bias remorse anyway. Why would I want that, right? Like you need to be sold on the product, on my brand, on my service. I need to be sold, that, sold on you that you're going to do the work and get the results. It's like it goes both ways. I think that's what like my core belief when it comes to sales. So that's why my sales training is so different. It's so yeah. different. Right. And I don't, now this is, I'm not, I don't want to 
come across like this is not braggadocious. My students from over the world, this is documented. My students, through what I teach them, right, just in the last two years alone, we produced over 3.5 billion. That's with a B in sales for companies and brands. Wow. I would say it works. Yeah. We wouldn't produce that kind of results if it doesn't work. Across any sectors that you can think of, from wow. real estate, from finance, from like personal development, from digital marketing, you name it. This is a new way of doing it, not the old way. And I don't, who wants to, like after you get on a sales call, you want to take a shower. You get <laughs> shit on, you feel dirty, you feel like, you know, that's not, how do you know you're good at it? I'll leave you with one tip, I'll wrap this up. How do you know when you're good at, what, good at closing? When after you've done the sale, after you close the sale, your prospect says, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for helping me to make this decision. That's when you know you're doing a good job. Yeah. And I teach all my students, you don't say thank you ever to a prospect. What? No. You say congratulations. Congratulations for making this decision. Congratulations. I look forward to helping you. Don't say thank you. Say congratulations. There you awesome. go. Awesome. I love it, man. Dan, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. I really appreciate it, man. And uh, I know our guys are going to love this one. So last send off takeaway message for the audience and then a place that our listeners can check out what you're doing. You're, I know your book's right there in front of us. Unlock it. When the book coming out, what, they can, uh, what website they can check that out on and, and where you want to send them to. Uh, the book is coming out actually in a couple months. They can actually get it on Amazon right now. Uh, I think they can do a pre-order. Like cool. the one I talked about, the four stages of life, the wealth triangle, I go much more in depth in, in the book. If they want to learn closing, you can check out highticketcloser.com. That's, that's kind of our hub. And you can get, get access to our free training just to see what we do. It's one thing to kind of listen, but until you see kind of this is what we do, now you're better understanding, wow, no wonder it's so powerful, right? How can you charge more money? How can you close those premium sales? So I would say highticketcloser.com. Awesome. Dan, thanks again for coming on, man. Really appreciate it. And uh, I know our guys are going to love this one. Take care and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Justin. Appreciate it. Hey, are you following me on Instagram yet? If not, you are completely psychotic, but you do have a chance to redeem yourself. Go to Instagram right now and follow at Justin Stenstrom. That's J-U-S-T-I-N-S-T-E-N-S-T-R-O-M. That's right. That's my first and last name. And when you follow me, you'll get day-to-day -day updates on book recommendations, biohacking tools, elite man know-how, and all the glorious content I probably shouldn't post about, but do anyways. Whether pics of me trying to conquer the world in my personal life or stories about cutting-edge research and technology i post all the time on instagram it's one of my favorite platforms so you have to be following me to keep up to date on elite man know-how get your daily dose of elite man entertainment and information sunday through saturday instagram at justin stenstrom also you can always click the link in the show notes which will take you to this link and all of the links that we mention here on the elite man podcast all right guys i hope you enjoyed that episode but before you go there's one last thing i'd like you to do and that's this subscribe to our podcast right now if you haven't already already. By subscribing to the podcast, you get every single episode the minute they're released. Get all of our Elite Man podcast episodes and all of our world-class advice absolutely free. Subscribe now if you haven't already and become an Elite Man today. And yes, if you do love the podcast, leave us an amazing review. We really do appreciate it.